Cockpit Review. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first cockpit review by Down to Earth Astronomy. This is where I'm going to take a look at your cockpit setups at home. But before we dive into the first cockpit, I just want to say thank you to all you guys who've been submitting cockpits. I'm not going to be able to go through all of them today. I've received a ton. That doesn't mean I don't want more. By all means, if you want your cockpit be to be featured in a future video, then by all means, go down to the description, find my email, send me an email with some pictures and a short description. Also, while you're at it, if you like this type of videos, I would really appreciate if you would give it a like. Okay, so the first cockpit here comes to us courtesy of Commander P. Frost. And there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Let's begin. First of all, thing I noticed, hot and mock, very nice. It looks like he's running a um, X52, the standard version of it. So he has the little laptop here. I love this little light he has here to uh, <laughs> to share the keyboard so you can see what he's doing. Um, a little laptop here for learning like, um, you can see he has Inara open right now, but Inara, um, EDSM, uh, EDDB, those kind of like, you know, the third party tools that you need when you're playing Elite Dangerous. You have a tablet here running Game Glass. I think this is called, was, did he call it Metric? Metric, I think that's how it's pronounced. And I don't, I'm not familiar with it, but it looks like a similar thing as to Game Glass, some kind of interface where you can, can press things, maybe, perhaps. I think this is the little Logitech breakout keyboard that just gives you like WASD keys and just like a few extra key bindings. The X52 doesn't have the largest number of key inputs, so having something a little bit extra here, and of course also with Game Glass, should give him and make sure he's covered. Another small display here. This is running, uh, I think this is connected up to the to the actual rig that's, uh, that he's playing on, and this is running, uh, right now it's running ED Scout. Right, oh, there it is. He did mention that in the email. So this weird thing here on the back of the um, of the chair is like a, a, a vibrator thing that like vibrates or like shakes the chair um, that matches the sound rumbling coming out of the ship. So when you have something that, when you have this really deep rumbles when you fly close to a star uh, in a gravity well, you can then feel it in the chair. That's really cool. And I just noticed the... Uh, uh, the co-pilot over here hiding behind all the different uh, <laughs> the different shelves. Moving up, we have two displays, three displays. Okay, they keep going. It's funny. I it's not often you see people stacking them vertically, and the bezels here. I guess you could get used to it. It is mainly an explorer, it seems. And for that, I can kind of see. Okay, it's not that important, but I think in the more fast-paced or combat situations, I would have a hard time working with a with a cockpit split in two. Oh, right. He says in the email he's running something called MDF Cougar. So it's some kind of MDF multifunction display thing. It's often used for flight sims. Um, but this is clearly one that works for Elite, at least. We can see the, uh, I believe that's a Type 6 that he has here. And normally it would have like a frame around it. Maybe we're going to see some cockpits later that use MFDs. I think we actually have one that has MFDs as well. Backlit. Very nice. I like, I'm a, I'm a sucker for backlit, uh, for backlit setups. It looks so good. The next setup here comes to us from Commander Red13405. And I really like this one because compared to the other one, which is really like just like ton of screens, this is a clear situation where you have a limited amount of space, but you st are still passionate about your <laughs> about your space sims. So he has this little like uh, fold out chair. He says he's mainly playing in VR. So that of course makes sense. Have this nice reclined chair. Here we can see the whole setup folded up and that has such a small footprint now. You can see what I mean about the seat, that it's not just fabric. It has some some like stability here up uh, towards the neck. I really like this idea that you can take the whole thing, fold it like, away and then put it somewhere aside if you need the space. I just love that. It's just like the smallest amount of space. That's what, not even a meter less than three feet, I would, I would assume, <laughs> across there. Nice rig there on top. Oh, look, look at that. Fly dangerously there on the graphics card. That is cool. Where did you get that? Some kind of cooler master cooling solution in here. And that looks like the G skill. Yeah, that's G skill RAM. Oh, he does send a close up of the uh, of the machine here. And yes, I was right. It was a cooler master AIO. But look at this. This is a um, it's a graphics card support system he has here. So it looks like this thing you can see is to prevent graphics card sack. Because graphics card are getting bigger and bigger, it's getting harder and harder to get them mounted without them sacking. That's what this is. It's an acrylic plate that is screwed in here to uh, some of the slots. I hope you're watching the video. Please let us know in the comment section 
where you got this because this is really cool. Next setup here, have a little panorama. It comes to us courtesy of Commander Kirstner. He's been with the channel's community for a very long time. So obviously we have the main gaming station over here. It looks like he split it up. So he has gaming here on the side with maybe work here at the center. It looks like a work PC to me. At least someone's calling him on Skype right now. So, <laughs> oh, hold on. We have small, look at that. We have small, I think we have a better picture of, uh, of, the, actual, um, of the actual gaming station here. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. So, I think those are the Logitech speakers. I think they are mouse, MSI keyboard, and underneath those there, we have, I believe, I know that base, that should be verbal. There we go. Yes, indeed, we have a, this is a Constellation Alpha on a Warbird base, as well as the Mongoose T50CM2 throttle, I believe, over here, both from, uh, from verbal. Very nice, exact same joystick I'm running. And this is the um, the model that proceeds, like the, the, the newer model than the joystick or the, the throttle base that I have. And now we can get a good picture of those 3D printed Anaconda. That's a Crate Mark II and a Crate Phantom. Oh, hold on, what do we have here? <laughs> okay, I almost missed that. That looks like a D2A sticker from the merch store. Very nice cursor. <laughs> I almost missed that one. That's very nice. I like it's a good use of space, I think, having this um, U-shaped desk where you basically have the chair in one position and if you want to work, you're facing one way. If you want to game, you just turn 90 degrees and you're gaming. I like that effective effective use of space here. Now, the next setup here, we have another panorama. I don't actually know the name of the commander here. Um, so this is going to be commander unknown, but it's not going to prevent us from having a look at his cockpit anyway. Side table, a little bit of food, basically it's like putting stuff aside thing. We have one machine down here. We have a total of, hold on, how many displays do we have? One, two, three, four, five. Watching Hello Dave. Nice. <laughs> we have a second rig over here, it seems. He did make an explanation of the whole setup in the email, and I'll see if I can remember this right. So this machine is hooked up to these two monitors, and looks like he's mainly using that for stuff like Discord, watching YouTube or Netflix or whatever you want there. And then this machine is hooked up to these three monitors. This is a touchscreen running Game Glass. And I assume this one is also just to have, you know, third party tools, those kind of things there. This looks like the joystick from the X56, the Logitech version, or the X55. I think this is the X56 Logitech version. So the newer variants, not the blue ones that I had. And this one, is that, if that's a Thrustmaster at least. Uh, is that a Thrustmaster, what's that called, like 16,000 thing? I've seen this in a lot of the submissions that people are running dual sticks and a single throttle. I never really understood the dual stick, um, but maybe I should try someday. I mean, it's not like I'm lacking joysticks, so it could be fun to try. Go XLR. This is essentially a sound mixer board that allows you to take inputs from multiple computers, mix them together, and pipe it all into one headset. I'm running something similar, not that exact one. It's not even a Go XLR model, but I have a similar mixer board here. And it also means that since if he's running Discord on this machine here, but gaming on this machine here, he can still pipe everything into the headset. He's running some uh, some wireless Bluetooth headphones, I think, uh, he said in the email. Um, and that is the control from here. And he has the different input levels so he can control like how much Discord does he want, how much game sound does he want, how much of the different inputs um, that he wants to have uh, in the headset. He can control all this from here. Uh, I like those uh, like C-shaped or U-shaped uh, desks where you get a ton of real estate around you to put stuff and things. He also have a um, have a chair from uh, from Secret Lab, so he's also sitting very comfortably. I see a lot of people using uh, having controllers lying around, and I assume it's for running the SRV. I know a lot of people don't like driving the SRV with a joystick, and therefore have a controller lying around. And of course, when coming Odyssey here next year, I think having controllers lying around is going to be a lot more common than it already is because walking around with a Hotus is not going to be a nice experience. Now, the next one here might seem like an odd choice for a cockpit review, but hear me out. This is the cockpit of Commander Cross Xfire. Cross Xfire, I think. This highlights one of the key points I actually wanted to make with this series, and that is that while it is fun, to look at these extravagant setup where people have a gazillion monitors and expensive hostesses and done crazy home engineering things to make things work. You don't necessarily need all that. You can definitely enjoy Elite on a 
very um, minimalistic setup. Cross X Fire here, he has a two year old daughter, so playtime is very limited. He has maybe a couple of hours a week to play. He used to play in the living room, but they're currently setting up the daughter's um, bedroom here, and they gave him a little bit of room. And this says here in his email that, uh, that his daughter has loved the fact that he set, uh, set this up in uh, in her room, and she, she apparently insists that he must not take the headphones out of the room. They must stay there on the shelf. I like that. From another angle, looks like an MSI laptop. Do I, do I get that right? Looks like MSI with a undefined mouse. I like these that like go from one extreme to the other. So see these small minimalistic setup and see that these small setups can definitely also work. Next, we have the cockpit or in this case, man cave of Commander Imminer. Imminer has been again, a, a part of the channel's community for, for quite a while. He's now over at 12th fleet. First of all, I think this is the first time I've seen people center mounting their joystick. Mostly people have to mount the side, but here again we have a, um, this is a Warthog, I think, Warthog joystick center mounted uh, with an extension. So you have quite a bit more travel than you would have on a, on a normal joystick. It does some live streaming, seems like he has a camera set up over here. And again, we have the throttle here. And then these are these MS MFDs, multifunction displays that I talked about, where you basically have a display at the background, you put these frames around the displays. Then you can put whatever you want on the displays, and you can then control um, a key bind all of these. So basically, if you wanted to make your own little um, heads-up display, basically, or a own little display, you put that in here, buttons and switches and dials, and I'm not even going to try to attempt to figure out what half of them does. <laughs> but... Definitely, there's a lot going on there. Keyboard and a Logitech mouse. There we go, we have the whole audio setup here. Now, I knew Imino was quite enthusiastic about audio as well, but that's a pretty neat mixer board. Okay, here we get a good overview of it. It looks like, is that a camera or a sensor? Uh, two things mounted up here. It looks like some kind of sensor for VR. We have the microphone here. We have the camera with a little light here. Love those small man Frodo stands. They're very neat. Now you can actually see the, uh, the multifunction displays in, um, in action. So you can see some of the radar screens, some of the screens you would have in game here and here. And you can see in game, this is, I'm not sure what flight sim it is, but you can see here that you have all those buttons around these sides here that you actually have in the cockpits of the plane. And they, of course, then mirrored out here with the buttons that you see here. So you have the same controls that you otherwise would. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these switches and dials are also mapped to all the stuff and things that you see in here. Now he did also send over this little video of uh, of his setup uh, at night, or when it's dark. I just wanna, <laughs> wanna point out the uh, wine glass at the back and the bottle of wine. Nice, very classy, I like that. Discord running there in the background as well. Oh, hold on, look at that. We have pedals underneath the table as well. I almost missed that, and a place here for the phone. I actually completely missed those. Very nice. Very nice cockpit, Imino. I just want to point out, like, you have this amazing setup with, like, expensive, like, audio equipment and cameras and multifunction displays, and then you have an old stool to put your throttle on. <laughs> Oh, what do we have here? Is that a USB? That looks like USB pass-through. Yeah. Oh, nice. And labeled. I like that. Very well done. Now, the next setup here comes to us courtesy at another unknown commander. I don't have a commander name, so this will be commander unknown. This is a fun setup. I wanted to include this as well. Looks like he's set up in his garage with a projector. We can see that like, that's light from outside. So I would assume you're living in some... You're not living in Scandinavia, that's for sure, because that's gonna get cold. Here we get a better picture of the chair, so we can see he has this like, it's like a, a, a lap deck, a lap board, whatever you call it. So, oh, right, yeah, okay, so that's all running down to like a USB hop, and then he can take that with him, move that around. That is, of course, backlit. Oh, it's just a mat. Oh, right, it's just like a wooden board with then like a full-size um, mouse pad on top. A Thrustmaster T6000M, I believe. He also said, as you can see here, this whole board here. He never actually takes that apart. It's, it's designed so that you can just like unplug it from his machine, take it into the living room if you want to hook it up to a machine in there, and just like move that around wherever it is needed. Is that an elite? Okay, I thought that was an elite symbol there. Like, where did you get that? 
<laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. Send a picture over of his rig. That is clean. Oh my god. That's been put some effort into this. I like the all white that you've gone with. And even like color matched your cables here. And have them even nicely needed with cable combs. Very well routed. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's a little space shuttle in there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love that. That's a cool looking rig. I mean, look at that. Even the power input, like uh, the power for the motherboard itself has cable combs on it and all color matched. That, that's a very nice and very space theme. Like the, the, the bright white colors match with the, uh, with the otherwise all black components. Look very nice, and of course, he's clearly been inspired by um, by like the spatial color theme going with the pure pure white and black, uh, and the clear colors make it look so surreal. And that's a really clean setup. I envy you. How <laughs> I wish I had a rig like that. Now that's all I managed to squeeze into today's video. As I said, I have a lot more cockpits to go through, so there will most likely be a video number two. If you want your cockpit in a future video, then do send it to me. My email's in the description. It's down to astronomy at gmail.com. Send it to me there. And maybe your cockpit's gonna be in a future video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give a like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.